Hey all you detours, it's Jason here back again to bring you another D2 talk where we interview inspiring people from around the art viz industry and beyond. This week I had a chat with Andrea Baresi who is one of the co-founders of Aesthetica Studio in Barcelona. I would also like to note that this interview was recorded at the end of January, so before the worldwide situation with COVID-19 really got serious. That's why some of the topics that we cover in this interview probably have a little bit different tone than what they would have if they had been filmed today. And for those of you who have been affected either directly or indirectly by this current crisis, we here at the D2 are here for you if you need anything. Feel free to hit us up via email or our social media channels and we'll do whatever we can to help. So if you like this video, give it a like, leave a comment and share it with your friends. And if you haven't done so already, go hit that subscribe button there, somewhere around there, so you can keep up to date with new videos and information that's coming out soon. Now, on to the interview, and I'll see you again real soon. Hi, Andrea. It's nice to have you Hello. on the D2 Talks this year. Hello. Um, I, uh, I, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Uh, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, about your company uh, and how you got started, maybe where you studied, uh, this kind of background info. That would be great to hear. So take it away. Yeah. Hello. Thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me. It's a really great pleasure to be here and uh, to share uh, my experience with uh, this huge communi community that you guys are creating uh, day by day. And uh, yeah, my name is Andrea Baresi. I'm the founder of Aesthetica Studio, which is a kind of brand new studio. We it was uh, founded in uh, 2017. We are based in Barcelona, and at the moment we are five people. And uh, yeah, I am uh, I'm architect, so I also have a background in architecture, as many of the other 3D artists do. And um, I studied in Milan. I'm from Italy. Uh, I studied at Politecnico di Milano, and uh, yeah, after. Uh, five years working in different uh, architecture offices, uh, decided to start in my own company. And I worked uh, alone for uh, one year as a freelancer. And after that, um, there was a need. Uh, I was in need of a team because the huge uh, uh, amount of project, the increase of the demand was so high. So if I wanted to keep a good relation with the client, I had to, to, to set up a team. And that's where it all started, basically. And, now we are five uh, and everything uh, is going well. Everybody's happy here in Barcelona. So, so far, so good. Yeah, that's great. Uh, how did you end up in Barcelona, though? You said you're Italian. How did that happen? Well, I had some, um, I had to travel around if I wanted to find some job as a, a job as architect. So I, I was in Barcelona before for an internship many years ago. That I fell in love with the city, and uh, after that I moved to Vienna to oh, okay. work with uh, the Lugan Meisler, mm -hmm. an architecture office there. And from there, then I got a, I applied for a position, for a job position, uh, for a three D artist position in Copenhagen for three uh, X and architects, and that was the first job as a three D artist where I decided to. Well, at the beginning it was more like a. a Okay, I will enter. Uh, I will get in as a three artist, then I will become a real architect. Uh, <laughs> but then there was something, uh, and then in the end, there was this uh, switch, no switch of uh, mentality. I, I, while well, seeing all these big projects, what it takes uh, to bring along this project over the years, uh, many changes, huge project, uh, and uh, long times. Uh, then I. At the time of uh, talking with the bosses, when there was like the actual possibility to become an architect and say, "Hey, I want to be an architect," then uh, then I I really thought like, "Is this really what you want to be?" And uh, then yeah, at that time I decided to to I realized that I really, I really liked the the archivist uh, world uh, and its industry. I really wanted to be even more part of it because when you are a internal uh, 
3D artists like this render guy of the office, uh, you're part of the office, you're not yourself uh, alone. Now. So I really felt this need uh, of being, uh, to, uh, to have my own identity. And then I decided to, to start uh, the studio. Why Barcelona? Uh, because at that time of my life, uh, Barcelona was the right place to go. Okay. So uh, my girlfriend was here. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, so the long, there's the long answer and then yeah, there's yeah, the yeah, short there. answer. <laughs> the hey, that's why I'm in Austria, right? It's the same reason. My wife yeah. is Austrian. So, um, and, I, and the funny thing is, is it's very common, I think, that, you know, people who studied architecture or worked in architecture, the ArcVis people, that's usually their background. I would say almost 95% or something. Yeah. Um, it and it's the same amazing. for me. You know, the same thing happened to me. Uh, yeah. I, I I always thought though while working in the um, when I was working in the architecture offices uh, that I worked in as a, and was working as 3D uh, and doing 3D that um, I noticed that I was still really involved in the process of designing because um, you're basically assisting in the design so in a way you are were still working as an architect it was just in a different capacity I think I think I mean of course once you go out. That's a good experience because once you go out, you can help, you can do still kind of do the same things because you understand what's going on. So I don't think it's a bad experience to do that. No, it's not. And um, <clears throat> moreover, you know, uh, you know, from within uh, how, how, how it works for real, right? Uh, what they really need, how, how they re react to deadlines and how they behave. That's right. And no. so you, know, you know what they need and you know what they need to, to hear as well. So sometimes in the end, uh, when you take a project uh, with architects, uh, it's like to be in part. I, I, we always feel like we are in the same team. So if we can help in any way, and we and if it's necessary we, we can change everything last minute uh, we do that if there is a physical time to do that uh, right they're not uh, very they're not strict at all uh, in terms of uh, i don't know rounds of comment uh, or whatever because we really feel uh, that we are in the same team but there has to be uh, in the beginning uh, like a, a mutual respect uh, that uh, I respect you, you respect me, I will do whatever you need to make uh, your project look great because I am not interested in making it look bad. So yeah, if we agree on that in the beginning, uh, uh, then uh, then in the, co the collaboration we go, we yeah. go fine. So yeah, that was also one thing, when to say no, when to, how you say right. no. Yeah, I mean, so, I think that's also an issue is of course that there's still always a deadline and as long as you can communicate properly that you know you if they come to you with something they want to do and you say well i can't this is not possible in that amount of time if they trust you then it, it'll work out because they will say okay yeah you're right it will um we have to do something else or we'll figure it out another way um but like, let's get into the questions here some of the the questions that we wanted to ask you um uh, one of the things that happens a lot is like artists uh, they like to um, they like to hear other people's stories because it either confirms what they're doing or uh, they see uh, maybe things that they aren't doing that they should do. Um, is there a story that you have heard from someone perhaps that, that you respected um, that's like influenced the way that you uh, try to act professionally? We are um, pretty in, at the beginning of our uh, journey, so I don't have many experience with uh, many clients but we had the chance to work from the beginning with the big firms uh, due to this uh, uh, to the, due to the fact that i had this network in scandinavia so uh, i knew many people that work in big architecture firms uh, i myself was working in a big architecture firm so uh, i was from the beginning uh, many of the many of the jobs were coming from these firms uh, so Mm, and it was a big thing for me at, at, at that time because I thought, wow, I just started them and I'm already working with uh, uh, Snow Hetta or uh, Henning Larsen, these big firms in Scandinavia. And then I read this interview, I remember, on CG Architects. It was a very, very old interview. And um, where uh, it was an interview to Mir, and I don't remember who. Mm -hmm. 
who was uh, the guy interviewed one of the heads uh, of Mir, uh, that was saying that not to struggle about uh, uh, working with uh, big uh, architecture firms just because of the name, because um, they actually prefer to work with, uh, well, I don't think, I, I don't know if they prefer, but they also enjoyed a lot uh, uh, working a lot, working with uh, smaller firms on smaller projects, uh, uh, so without being obsessed with this uh, thing of the name, the brand. And I really, I really experienced that myself because after this big push at the beginning, that we were already there with, in terms of names and brands, uh, uh, then other firms came with a, for a smaller size, uh, sometimes very small, uh, but, uh, and, uh, but we enjoyed a lot of those projects. Uh, because uh, there is a, maybe a closer relation, uh, the project maybe is a kind of a smaller scale. Uh, so, you know, when sometimes uh, it can happen that with big project, nothing is decided, not yeah. everything can change. Uh, the materials are uh, uh, wood. <laughs> so, uh, while maybe the, the smaller office has another uh, attention to detail, another uh, atta- right. it feels more attached to the project, and that brings. Uh, a better project and also a better communication with uh, with us. So that's that's something that I, mm, got stuck in my mind. Like, don't be obsessed uh, to work with the stars, uh, but uh, just enjoy your work, whatever work comes in. Yeah, uh, I think it's a good thing. Sounds good. Um, and just to to switch gears a little bit, uh, another question um, that I would have is. Is there something that you do, uh, some ritual that you do, or some kind of technique or, or thing that you do in order to uh, get projects done? Like, do you do you have like t- some to do lists, or do you have a special way that you do things so that you know you have everything on track during the no, project? We don't have anything on track. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But uh, yeah, well, I think everybody has his own uh, rituals. Of course, uh, mm, there is a point when uh, when. Uh, when the, Im- when the image is decided, and at that point in our workflow is pretty at the beginning, because we send a draft, we are already finalized images. So at that point, when we set the image, okay, that's it. Then yes, we do a big list of things to do, just a bit, a bit mechanical, where they are, where there is no, no really artistic uh, feeling involved. It's just a production. Okay, let's just do the things right. In terms of rituals, uh, I think everybody has his own little rituals. I have, I myself, I have, uh, I know for sure that uh, at the beginning of the project, uh, when I don't know the project, I have to listen to some uh, new music that I don't know. Okay. Because uh, because uh, I cannot listen to some tunes that I know uh, when I'm working on something that I don't know. While in the in the end, uh, when I have to close, uh, when the, maybe it's tight, uh, the deadline uh, and uh, the comfort zone uh, is gone completely, then the music has to bring me back to the comfort zone, and I have to listen to some music that I know, and to that make me feel comfortable with the, with the pressure. That's maybe a ritual. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. I like that a lot. I think it's pretty related to music or. Yeah, this, uh, this job, of course, you have to stay in the computer. So I think music is a big part of it. Yeah, yeah. I still have a, a memory of uh, when I was in college. There's like some music that I listened to so much while I was working. You know, late in late night in the studio and whatever. I'm, you know, I'm I'm 45 now, so this is we're talking like you know, uh, gr- grunge music, yeah, <laughs> like 90s. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that that uh, whenever I hear songs like that, I sometimes I don't really listen to that music anymore that much because it puts me in this weird feeling like that I have a lot of work to do. Yeah, because it recalls <laughs> a feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh my god, yeah. So, um, but yeah, music yes. can do that. That's for sure. And I I agree with that. I think that's actually when I I also feel like I do that when I'm in a crunch time. I listen to music that I really like and really know, and I'm really it it like zones me in somehow on the on the project. You know? Yeah, it's not. It's a, it's a, a matter of creating uh, um, some kind of memory that you know that you can do it. Uh, not only yeah. an exploring thing that you don't know the music, you don't know the project, what's happening here. No, you know the music. You know what's going to happen. You're going to finish this image now. 
Yeah. As it has to be done. So is there is there anything um uh you know, I know you said you're a young company, but you it's not like you just started working then. You worked before that as well, but is there something that you would know like to have known back then when you started that you that you know now? Uh I don't I think the main struggle for people at the beginning uh, like me so architects i would say is that we don't have any idea of uh, management so of, of uh, management of a, of a company like in terms of uh, numbers uh, in terms of uh, uh, revenues strat economical strategies uh, and so it's a bit uh, on the go every time so maybe which is good at the beginning because maybe you start low, but then uh, it's difficult when you start low to raise uh, the fee, for example, or um, or also like uh, yeah, the optimization of the hours the, um, to have, have an idea of how to manage uh, the, the hours and the cost per hour, like all this economical, uh, like this. Uh, um, management of a company that comes from a business education mm -hmm. is completely missing in architecture. You just do a project, uh, but then, <laughs> but then a project needs to stand on its own legs. So yeah, now that's, that's true, it. and I I think that architects have a difficulty with that for sure as well. Yeah. So Excel. Yeah, in one word. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's a, um, you know, and I think that's actually what. Uh, uh, that's one of the things that Fabio tries to do, you know, is he's trying to bring this kind of part of it into um, into ArcVis. So you you actually, it's something, you know, it's it's totally true. It's something you need to think about. And I think even if you even if you worked in a studio uh, or an architecture studio or an ArcVis studio, if you're just working as an artist, you still don't really get that uh, education uh, because you have your job to do and you do it, and then. Uh, um, but you know, if you look, at, if you watch what other people are doing, if you if you're interested in it, you can definitely get some good information. If you work for somebody, yeah, who's a, if you work for a bigger company, um, that's good that you mentioned uh, Fabio because it was the second part of the the answer was uh, was actually Fabio's work that he's doing. He was great. Uh, it was of great help, especially in the beginning when it comes to self consciousness of what you're doing, why you're doing it, and and um, that's super important to know from the beginning that he, uh, he stresses a lot the, the value of, uh, of your work, of your time. And that's super important when you, when you do such work, which is not countable, uh, which, yeah. which is difficult to evaluate. So, so yes, that, that was a, a very, very big thing that helped me a lot. At the beginning. Yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, definitely good. Um, so uh, also similar to that, uh, is there something that you have uh, in your in your life till now where you failed doing something that um, turned out to really like teach you something? Uh, well, it's, it's in the same uh, in the same uh, area. I would say I did a lot of mistakes in terms of uh, uh, in, in terms of numbers. Uh, also talking to client, maybe accepting. Uh, the, the biggest uh, the biggest mistake is just to accept a job uh, like which is, which is paid the less just because uh, it's important the project uh, but every project is important so but then you don't know that at the beginning so it's uh, it's like maybe go too low sometimes uh, or not really too low or something uh, that it's not that it doesn't depend on you. So if you want to make a, to do a project for free, then perfect. But you decide to do it for free. So that was uh, that is the main mistake and probably the most common. Yeah, I mean, I think that's actually it. Kind of leads right into the next uh, the next uh, issue, and that's you know saying no, uh, and you know, to be able to say no uh, to things is really powerful. And it actually, um, I would like to know if you've, um, if you found that, that you have, you know, if, as you became confident where you could say, okay, I'm going to say no to this because of whatever reasons. Uh, and uh, is there, is there, are there situations a lot of times where you feel like that has helped you to say no? 
I think no, no. So in some cases, can create an identity because if you say no to certain type of project, uh, mm, I don't remember there was uh, like um, because there's this uh, uh, one mistake that uh, that I heard from other people when they tell you how to do things at the beginning is like yes, yeah, say yes to everything, accept everything, and then you will figure it out which is a way of doing business, uh, which works. Uh, and uh, there are many companies that are based on this, uh, this, uh, this policy. But then, uh, first of all, then you don't know who you are. You just say yes to whatever thing comes in. And then uh, uh, saying no allows you to think about what you're doing, uh, why you want to do this, and you don't want to do that. Uh, uh, there are many projects, like interior projects, for example, uh, that come sometimes comes uh, always less. But uh, we but we don't do in, interior images, for example, like interior as a, a living room or mm -hmm. a bedroom or this kind of uh, imagery, which is great. It is, but it is completely in a, it is another sector of this business. Our business is very wide. There are many sectors. There is real estate. There is uh, interior interiors. Uh, there are competitions. There are uh, VR and everything. But also within the still images, there are so many things that you that you can focus. Uh, that um, you can do everything. But then, of course, uh, if you do everything, uh, then maybe you lose uh, something else. It's just a matter of know who you are and what you want right. to do. So I'm, I don't agree with that uh, saying yes to everything and then let's figure it out uh, is our way to do things. Uh, while, uh, and and this is one, on, like uh, when it comes to no in a working relation, I think that also helps, but it has to be a no because, uh, like you always have to say no because of this, 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 because if you, if, clients in my case architects are educated uh, uh, like they can understand situations so if it's a no because the lightning doesn't work uh, there is no time it's gonna be uh, very bad because uh, with, uh, all this uh, with all this motivation then uh, then it's a no that helps everybody so right yeah, I love no <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely no, uh... no I, I always say yes until the beginning until the end so it's just <laughs> But the no's are big no's. So. Yeah. So, um, have are there any? Uh, are, do you do you read a lot? Do you read a lot of uh, books? Or, yes, yes, yeah? yes, yes. Is there That's anything right. that you've read which you uh, feel has been really helpful in your in your your daily life or your business life? Uh, well, I don't read uh, a lot of books. Uh, like I read all the all kinds of book. I'm not very into uh, like um, I don't know like motivational group, uh, books for business. Uh, but I did read read some, especially in the beginning when I had no clue of what to do. And um, if I can recommend one, there was I was struggling at the beginning because um, to build up a team. So when you're alone, everything is fine. But then when you have to build a team, it's really where do you start from? And uh, so I, uh, I bought this book, which was called uh, something like uh, um, uh, what was it? How to Hire a Players or uh, mm -hmm. something about hiring, uh, how to hire uh, a players. Yeah, I think it was that. And it was um, a book about finding uh, the top people for your team, why you should do that, how you should do it, and how you should keep them. And I think... Uh, that helped a lot because that's what I try to do all the time uh, to find not somebody that I have to teach him, him, him or her how to do things, uh, but uh, like the people that are a player. So they know already what to do. They will do better than you. And uh, in the end, they are the first customers. So, yeah. uh, so they are first clients. So it is, uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Like following this book by, yeah, by build up a strong team of uh, top players that uh, that they don't need uh, to be taught all the taught all the time. Right. So, so this, yeah, I would say this book. And and have have you been successful in that? Do you think that you've been able to, or do you feel like you've been able to do that to collect a team that you don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, making sure they're doing the right thing and they're they're able to do it? 
Yeah, absolutely. They are better than me. <laughs> that's prob- that's, <laughs> no, a, no. that's a good tip, though. <laughs> no, no, it is a yeah. It, also, because you create this mentality of hey, we are a we are a great studio. You are great people. So also, uh, they, they know they are in a team that has this uh, uh, this vision. So they are the first, maybe to 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 help you to find uh, to find other great people so because you want to work with some uh, some some good people around you know so it creates this, this mentality that is help, healthy for the team i guess and uh, yeah actually the first hire was the uh, adriano brought him uh, another uh, another uh, of his friends that he thought it was uh, a good match so it 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 does work this uh, this mentality this yeah, mindset that- that's great. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess that's sort of something we also are trying to do with the D2 in uh, creating that place for people to meet um, because it's, it's creating a place where all of the, all of the great people are coming together. And this is also helpful for, yeah, other companies who are looking for people. We've already, we've already made, we already have a lot of examples of people meeting there and, uh, you know, going on to work in other in big companies or uh, the companies being able to find people by coincidence, not even uh, not, they weren't even there to do that necessarily, but it happens. Absolutely. I found my office there in, the, in Vienna <laughs> with uh, Al, uh, Albert and Roser of Graf. Yeah. They, so if uh, they were like, are you looking for an office? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Not not this year. It was uh, three years ago. No, two years ago. (laughs) Well, there you go. You know, it's... uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can um, find everything in Vienna. Yeah. Do you... you, Are you aware or do you hear of any uh, recommendations that people make sometimes uh, online or in person? It doesn't matter either way. uh, That you think are... Is bad advice? Yeah, I think that's... Kind of what I, what I said a bit before about the uh, yes, uh, the yes way. So yeah, you take everything, you accept everything, and then uh, you you will find a way to do it, uh, and then uh, you can do collaborations. And I don't believe that. I I think it's better. That, yeah, some I think collaboration is a big word in our. Uh, it's a very tricky word in our industry because yes, there are collaborations, but then it's your job. Is it my job? So. Uh, I think I think this uh, when people recommend uh, to accept uh, every type of job, uh, no matter the size, no matter the amount, even if you cannot do it, uh, then you can always collaborate with somebody else. I, I don't think that's a good uh, a good advice to tell people. I think the the best way is just to know who you are, what you can do, and just do it. Do you have the feeling that? the people in our field, in the arch- architecture visualization field, um, are supporting each other? Do you feel like it's a supportive uh, group? Yes, absolutely. It's very visible this in, uh, in Vienna or other events, uh, which is, it is a great community. Luckily, we live in a, in a period, in an era where there is a lot of work, so everybody is friendly with each other. Nobody is uh, stealing client uh, because it's so big the demand and uh, so little the render companies that uh, or I'm talking about the arc these because right uh, so yeah the community is fantastic it, it, I there are some sometimes I, I I send out the job to some other people that I yeah. cannot do and the other way around uh, so even competitors if you want to call them that way so and it never happened. Like last time, I called uh, another company to to see what they were out of the blue. Like they didn't know me, and uh, I called them just to know how they were uh, how they were doing a certain uh, specific thing. Uh, and then uh, when I don't know how to do something, maybe I call the other one. So it it, it is a great collaborative environment for now. <laughs> have you yeah you're but you're right about the fact that it's a it's kind of a boom time like there's so much work that uh it's true that that could change if there if it's a down period uh yeah we in and uh me and the guys uh, we've talked about this before 
we realized that we have been doing the D2 since the time we started until now. We've been completely in a period right. of only, oh. yeah, only a good period. And we're actually curious to see what happens. Uh, I mean, I don't want to see what happens. Honestly, I don't, I hope it could always be like this, but we know the reality that's not going to happen. It's going to, there's going to be a, a period of slowdown. Um, it's just the, the way of the economies uh, these days. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I, I'm, we haven't experienced that. Not, not while we're doing the D2. I've experienced it twice in my lifetime already uh, working in so architecture. You know, you and, know how it is. and yeah, it gets a little bit crazy when, uh, you know, when that happens. But, um, but in terms of since we've been doing the D2, we haven't seen this. So we don't even know, you know, maybe it affects us as well in a bad way. We're not sure what, what can happen. Um, but I'm do you also think, really curious, so, yeah. Yeah. Do you think that um, there's something that, uh, that that we could do in the community to, to help, you know, keep the prestige of the community high? Uh, or, or Because I feel like sometimes we we realize ourselves that we're not recognized the same way as like photographers, for instance, or something like that. Well, I, it's very actual topic with the work of Matthew Bannister yeah. he's doing. I think that's a great step that he did. I, I think he was the only person that could do that uh, or, or one of the few person that could do that uh, because uh, uh, the first time I read his post on this uh, credit revolution uh, uh, topic, I was like, really, do I have uh, rights? Like Jeff Jeff Mottles, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Mottles, uh, he in the in the past uh, did wrote some articles uh, lo, like explaining how to, what to do, how to do it, what is your what are your which ones are your rights, and uh, what should what you should expect and what you should do to get those rights. But mm, the way the way so maybe Matthew Bannister just continued this uh, this uh, his work. Uh, and uh, he did it in a very effective way, very aggressive. Uh, but that's the only way to to do it and uh, I, I, this is a great uh, great uh, step for all of us because now I know that if my name is not there there is a problem because I, I've always felt like okay the architects are the, the one that has the final decision they know they, they know when they can publish right. and they if they want to change the image and publish the other image they change it they don't put the name so this brought a lot of positive uh, things to the industry so um, and this will help for sure this uh, uh, like little by little this continuing uh, this continued continuing discussion about uh, about it so so what happens when it comes to collaboration who is collaborating with whom uh, it will be a positive change this one yeah i think so too it's going to take a while but it it, it... You know all, all those things kind of things do but yeah you're, you're absolutely right that uh the person who he was the he's the right person to do this because he has credibility um and a reputation you know uh and and he's, and he's also uh, also jeff uh, he, uh, is of course he's a great personality and yes. a great reputation but maybe maybe matthew is more uh, into the actual profession of what 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 i i see myself more uh, uh, well, <laughs> kind of, but I'm closer in a way to, to what Matteo is doing because he's also living. Alone. Yes, that's right. And it's not, I, I didn't mean that Jeff isn't. I just meant that Matthew's credibility is because he's been leading a studio doing sure, the work sure. for the last 20 years or something. Uh, Jeff <laughs> has not been in production in a long time. He has a different role in the, in the, in the Absolutely. visual arch, archivist community uh, and also a very important role, but um, in terms of this uh, credit, uh, Matthew definitely has the credibility, and that's uh, that's really important. And um, yeah, of course, I think we have to support yeah, said, him. Hey, no, no, stop, everybody! No, let's stop this uh, now. Yeah, one, one by one, uh, going there and say no, not like that, no, no. So that's that's great. <laughs> I think it's going to be interesting when we when 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 it's time to move on, like when we feel like we've kind of 
figured out the social media thing and gotten that kind of cleaned up uh, to go towards the architects and see how we can manage to get them to like credit us as well. That's going to be more interesting, actually, because that's a different topic altogether. Um, of course, it has to do with contracts and so on. And I think those guys at DBox do a fantastic job of that because they're from the very beginning. It's clear what's supposed to be happening. And that's great. Yep. Um, but as we know, you know, most people don't do that. In the, in the yeah, exactly. they don't they don't think about this from the beginning but i think it, this is a good thing because this will get people thinking about that they'll start thinking okay yeah i should have this from the very beginning i should say i need i'm gonna have credit when this is published and uh it shouldn't be a negotiable thing unless they want to pay you you know more money to not have it so uh, i think that's very important it's a great thing um yeah, because then uh, then uh, I, I thought like well who am i not to have the credit am i an idiot that i don't get the credit so, <laughs> so then then you get into the mindset that yeah then a credit is, is an important thing that's right yeah um so do you ever think about um a purpose like in your in your in your life in your in your archvis um uh in your archvis business um um, do you ever think about that? Like, what's your purpose? Like, what are you doing? This is a super difficult question. <laughs> it's a good one, though, I think. Yeah. It's super nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people don't think about it too much, I don't think. Yeah. No, no. Well, I... Like, the purpose of what, I, what we do every day is just uh, to, be, to be happy in the end, you know, I guess. And by happy means to have a, a nice and... Uh, pleasant and healthy workspace so like working uh, sorry work environment mm -hmm. and so i myself i think the most important thing is that when i get to the office into the studio it's a super nice atmosphere everybody's happy and uh, there are well, and there is time to do the things properly so that's what i'm focused now like my purpose is to create this environment where uh, 3D artists are happy to come, to join and to come and to do their best. This is the purpose yeah. of, 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 uh, of working. Like, no, there is not economic. Uh, okay, I'm not an ONG, but uh, but the main purpose is to to be happy with with their work and to create like a sustainable working environment. Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, I think, of course, it's clear that you have to make money in, yeah. to live. It's not a, it's not an unusual thing, but that's true. It's um, what past, past the money issue. You know, what, what is it that you're, you know? It's just happiness, the purpose, no? Everybody finds uh, different degrees of happiness, uh, but uh, of course, uh, you have to compromise on some things. Uh, but uh, yeah, the main purpose is everybody, it's, uh, our happiness, my happiness, and the teams uh, mm -hmm. that's uh that's a bit my might sounds a bit cliche but that's true no but i think uh i mean you could have said as well that my purpose is to make money and i don't care about anything else so that's a i mean it's also uh from if it's if it's your opinion that that's how it should be then you know that's how yeah, it is. Yeah. but um so i i don't actually I don't think it's too cliched. I think it's actually a, a good a good purpose to have, you know, a good way to to try to live your life and to try to to help others have the same, you know, to be content. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it's pretty related to this uh, top players that thing we were talking about previously. Because if you are a, a great artist, you don't want to work uh, in a bad environment. So. Uh, it's also a way to attract uh, people, right? And to keep them there, and to keep and them to keep them, keep them yeah. with you, because yeah, that's an important thing as well. Um, yeah. so uh, also a kind of continuing that that uh, that theme. Um, what what is what is success for you? How do you view success? How would you ra gauge the success in your life? Or and I'm not talking about just the business. I'm talking about in your life in general. It could be both. But. I think so. I, well, I think uh, it is related to business in the end. Success is definitely related to business. Uh, but uh, like success is being able, I think, to, to be happy with your work, but at the same time to 
uh, don't feel bad if you have to take some time off for your life. Uh, like to have a great balance. This is the Scandinavian lesson that I got over the years. The success is not money. Actually, the Scandinavian uh, firms have a pre-horizontal structure. And uh, my boss had takes a uh, normal car as uh, everybody else. Uh, but uh, he had uh, maybe more time, like a lot of time to spend uh, with our family. It was normal that at 4 p.m. he said, okay, let's go pick up the kids. Uh, that's success. Right. You can do whatever you want, uh, and it's not about the money. You, you can you have a nice balance with work. Uh, and it, it's not that you can do whatever you want. That's wrong. Yeah, it's just uh, to have a nice, a great balance. Uh, not nice, a great balance within work uh, and, uh, and life. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think that's a it's also a good a good way to view success. I think it's it's uh, everybody is going to have a different. Uh, I, or not i think that's a, a common one uh it's it's but it's also a very european one um probably even more so scandinavian but it's also european like coming from the yeah. united states uh i always uh, felt like that success for people in the united states meant a lot of times you know th your your monetary or uh your work position like how how would you how what position do you hold in your in your job or how much money do you make um yeah. it's not I everyone of course know. i'm not generalizing but uh well. there's a there there's not a the the, the feeling about um work-life balance is completely different <laughs> for sure <laughs> You can just yeah. see that by how much people work. Um, so, uh, I've I've enjoyed Europe, I have to say, because it is it's a definite different feeling, um, and I, I really enjoy it. Um, but I think, yeah, it's something we can all strive for, uh, and it's something that's important in also for maintaining your sanity. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> because then uh, it's a creative work. So if you're not uh, stable uh, and uh, uh, calm and uh, concentrated and you're relaxed uh, then uh, how, how are you going to, to produce a nice drawing <laughs> so, yeah that's right that's right if you're stressed beyond you're stressed, yeah no yeah it's very it's difficult yeah um so is there anything else that you'd like to to talk about uh I think we covered pretty much most of the interesting topic. I don't yeah. think uh, the workflow <laughs> winter <laughs> or everything is, is more interesting than that. So, yeah, you know, this, that's the thing. These days, uh, this kind of information is 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 available. You know, like uh, yeah, yeah exactly. how how people do things. If you want, if you want to know how to do things, you can find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. of course, of course, people do want to know how specific offices might handle things. But I think the more and more that you see people talk about that and you watch what people do, it's pretty much the same. I mean, yeah. to be there's some variations, but. Um, there, it's still all going to the same goal, and I think in a way, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's similar, right? I mean, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But uh, I, I want to say, I want to say thank you very much for doing thank this you. with us today, and uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to sign off here and say goodbye to all the all the people watching the video. Thanks a lot for being here, and uh, we'll see you for the next talk. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, bye. bye.